Last week I had this fun little idea to try and combine my degree in engineering with my love of video games and use some statistical methods to figure out which Pokemon was objectively the best. Now let's see what you guys thought of it. Oh my god! You've all spoken, and I will listen. I am definitely going to try and make some more statistically best videos in the future. I guess that's my thing now. But those take a long time to make. So in the meantime, I had an idea for some shorter form videos to appease the ever looming presence. That one statistical dragon that nobody can seem to ever truly slay. The YouTube algorithm. So today, I present to you episode one of Pokedex Lies. Hit that intro, Richard. What do you mean you don't have an intro? You forgot, oh, you forgot. Uh, all right, I don't know. Figure something out. Anyone who's played a Pokemon game before definitely knows what a Pokedex is. It's that thing the professor tells you to complete at the very beginning of the game and then you promptly ignore it for the entire game because you've already decided on the final team you want right from the get-go. Come on, be honest, we all do it, nobody uses that thing. But while we all may have a Pokedex or two or eight, I bet a lot of you have never bothered to actually read any of it. If you did, you might start to question Professor Oak's qualification because half the time the size and weight doesn't match up to the Pokemon at all. Like, take this for example. Magneton weighs 10 times more than Magnemite, despite just being three Magnemites. And the little descriptions are absolutely insane. Some of them are innocent enough, but others are downright impossible, like they were written by the manic imagination of an unchaperoned child. That's because they are! And that's like, I feel like the biggest twist of Legends Arceus is that the whole Pokedex was just some kid like, Whoa, look at that thing! I know everything about it, I'm gonna write it down, and then they took it as law. Today, we're looking at one of the more popular wacky Pokedex entries, the one for Magcargo. <clears throat> its body temperature is roughly 18,000 degrees Fahrenheit. Flames sprout from the gaps in its hardened shell. Now, 18,000 degrees, or 9,982 degrees Celsius for you international viewers, is very hot. But it's such a high number that it's kind of hard to imagine just how hot it is. So, allow me to put it into some perspective for you. Other Pokedex entries state that Magcargo's body is made up of magma, or molten rock. Magma can range in all sorts of temperatures, but most volcanic magma averages at around 2,700 degrees Fahrenheit, or 1,500 degrees Celsius. Which means that Magcargo is around 12 times hotter than actual magma. It's also hotter than the surface of the sun. And not just like a little hotter. The sun has an average surface temperature of only 9,940 degrees Fahrenheit. Feels real weird saying only there, but if the Pokedex is to be believed, Magcargo is nearly twice as hot as the sun. Not only is that an insane factoid, it's also scientifically impossible based on the evidence we see in the game. Wild Magcargo are found exclusively in rocky caves and volcanic environments. Areas that we would expect can stand up to their fair amount of heat. But not this much heat, because 18,000 degrees is over twice as much as you would need to vaporize granite, basalt, sandstone, and limestone at atmospheric pressure. Not melt, vaporize. Turn that cave floor of solid rock into scorching hot, probably toxic, gas. Clearly, this is impossible, and whoever wrote the Pokedex is a dirty liar. <clears throat> Allow me. So, obviously, my cargo isn't real, so I can't do any experiments or anything to find out exactly how hot its body temperature is. But we can get a rough estimate using some of the clues found within the game itself. Richard, my lab coat, please. You didn't get me a lab coat? I lit, I, this morning I gave you a list asking for two things, an intro and a lab coat, and you didn't do either? 
For starters, Met Cargo has the ability Flame Body, which has a 30% chance of inflicting the burn status on any creature that makes physical contact with it. A burned Pokemon will lose 1 8th of its maximum health every turn in battle and has its physical attacks do half as much damage. These are some pretty severe symptoms, so I'm going to give Macargo the benefit of the doubt and say that the burn status in Pokemon is roughly equivalent to suffering a third degree burn, which is a very serious burn that could lead to permanent injury and even death. Also, I'd like to take this time to thank all the internet health websites that include super high definition photos of the different types of burns that I had to look at while researching for a video about a fake lava snail. That was just real fun. Because Flame Body only has a small chance to burn, we're gonna assume that Medcargo is right at the threshold temperature between second degree and third degree burns. This means that if you only make a brief contact with Macargo, you'll probably still come away with a pretty painful burn, but nothing that's going to take a chunk of your life away. But if you make slightly more prolonged contact with it, you're going to have a bad time. I was going to try and calculate exactly how long you would need to touch Macargo in order to get burned, but that would involve a fair amount of heat transfer, which is every engineer's worst nightmare. Or maybe it's just mine. It sucks. I hate it. So we're not going to do it. Unless, Richard, uh, you don't happen to know anything about heat transfer, do you? No, no, go figures, I don't But back to the topic at hand. With all these observations and assumptions, how hot could my cargo possibly be? Well, as it turns out, there's some conflicting data here. But as far as I could find, the temperature at which you need to touch something and get a third degree burn is somewhere between 130 and 140 degrees Fahrenheit, which is still very hot compared to any other creature that exists on Earth, as far as I could find at least. But, you know, it won't burn a hole straight through the Earth's crust. In theory, this actually sounds like a pretty foolproof defense mechanism, especially for a slow Pokemon like Macargo. After all, nothing's going to try and eat you if it can't even touch you without getting burned. But that brings up another question. Why doesn't any other animal we have in real life have a surface temperature like this? Well, it's actually pretty simple. If you're hot enough to burn your enemies, then you're probably hot enough to cook yourself, literally roasting in your own skin. But even if you did have some way of magically resisting the high temperatures, that heat just can't come from nowhere. You need to expend a lot of energy in order to maintain a body surface temperature like that. And that's energy that's probably better spent elsewhere. My guess? My cargo probably isn't actually hot at all. At least, not that much hotter than you or I. Because, you see, there's more ways to burn someone than just heat. In fact, there are creatures in real life that can cause burns just by touching them. Take a jellyfish. As anyone who's had the misfortune of touching one of these sons of guns like I have would know, it ain't fun. Their tentacles are covered in tiny little spikes that, when they touch your skin, release a poison that gives you a rash that feels remarkably similar to a burn. And I think a similar thing is going on with Macargo here. Perhaps the bright red body of Macargo isn't magma like the Pokedex says, because that would be insane, but instead some sort of toxic or acidic mucus that the creature secretes that gives the sensation of a burn when you touch it. And if that's the case, then perhaps Macargo really isn't a fire type all along. It just evolved to look that way to warn predators of the nasty acidic burns they'll receive if they ever mess with it. Hey, thanks so much for sticking around to the very end of the video. If you like this video, let me know what other Pokedex lies you'd like me to expose in the future. Then, if you want to see more from me, you can subscribe and click on one of the videos floating around the screen. I'm trying to hit monetization here on YouTube, but I need 4,000 watch hours on my channel within the past year, so every second of every video that you watch helps a lot. Well, that's it for me, but I'll see y'all next time. But until then, don't forget to take it easy.